thoughts on the season? Best player, worst player, best goal? Thoughts on Steve Bruce? It's the season review. Welcome back to Black and White Banter, everyone. The season is done now, and as promised, the content is going to keep on getting churned out week upon week as we start to look into hopefully some transfer speculation, some takeover speculation, no doubt, because that's been going on now for what feels like 25 years. But today's video is going to be a review of the season, um, personal bests, personal worsts. There'll be quite a few of those, let's face it. Um, so the season overall, I've taken a bit of stock. I've looked back over the fixtures just to jog my memory because I think it's very easy, Newcastle fans, for us all to get bogged down with what's happened in the last month. It's fantastic that we finished on a high. I'm not complaining about that. We secured safety. Thank the fucking Lord because that championship is getting harder and harder to get out of and there's plenty of clubs who testify to that. I don't really think Mike Ashley would have invested to get us back into the Premier League. So we are safe and we can enjoy the summer safe in the knowledge that we are back in the Premier League for another year at least. But it's a long old season and I went back very much to basics and looked back over the start that the season started in. I think it was September we started in. And I just looked all the way through the fixtures, jogged my memory a little bit. And, well, we survived. And I think realistically, as Newcastle fans, we have to accept, as much as it pains us to say it, that our aim every year is survival. I personally think that this season was a total shit show. Yes, we survived and it looked like we wouldn't at one point, especially after that Brighton game when we got beat 3-0 not too long ago. But going into the season, we'd spent the most money for a very long time. Bruce had had a fair bit of money to spend for Mike Ashley by his standards. Callum Wilson was a fantastic signing, and that's proved to be the case. Jamal Lewis, on paper, looked a good signing. We had Hendrick, who on a free transfer looked okay, didn't cost anything. Um... And we went into the season with a little bit of optimism, more optimism. And I mean, I know the year before hadn't been great, but we had a little bit more optimism before them signs. Fraser, Ryan Fraser was another good signing on paper. His assist record had been great over the previous three years for Bournemouth. And I just don't think the season has lived up to that. And some of the football we have seen under Steve Bruce, even if I go back over my match reviews, was horrendous. And we went into a run of form. The first part of the season, I remember that first game against West Ham when we won 2-0, and I think we were all optimistic after that. We looked OK, we were probably the better side. Wilson scored, Hendricks scored, and things looked pretty rosy in the garden. Fast forward nine months, and that West Ham team's just qualified for Europe, and we escaped just about to escape relegation. Who would have thought that? But if you look at our form in that first three months of, the, of, of 2020, we lost a few games, played horrendous. Then we won a game. You know, there was wins against the likes of West Brom, 2-1. Um, we won at Crystal Palace in November after an awful run of form, 2-0. Um, if you cast your memory back to that on a Friday night when Joe Linton played well, and there was just no consistency. And when we were bad, we were really, really bad. And the season for me has been three quarters bad. You know, there's... If you would ask me a handful of performances, my my the matches where I could say we played really well, I'm clutching at straws. I think West Ham on the first day we were we were pretty good. They were poor, but we were pretty good. Um, we were pretty good in the first half against West Brom when we beat them at home when Almiron scored after like 15 seconds, and then we petered off. Southampton at home later in the season when we won 3-2. We were good in the first half and resilient in the second when we went down to 10 men. But as you can see, I'm clutching at straws here. Now, on the flip side of that, if you were to ask me how many shit show performances we put in, the list could be endless. Absolutely endless. Some really clueless performances. Um, Brighton at home, 3-0 in our when we lost 3-0 in our first, first home game of the new season after the win at West Ham. That's what I mean about the inconsistency. A good start to begin with and then absolutely terrible in our first home game. There was Man United away where we actually played well for the first 60 minutes and then just shit, shit went downhill from there. 
God, I'm just literally thinking off the top of my head now. Um, but there's so many to think of. West Brom away, nil-nil. That was absolutely diabolical. Sheffield United away. We were the, one of the only team, the only team at the time to get beat by them. Don't forget that performance, Newcastle fans. I don't think we ever will. That was horrendous, horrendous, absolute shit show. Brentford in the cup, and I'll touch on that game in a second. That was one of my most disappointing moments of recent times as a Newcastle fan. That was a buy into the next round playing against Brentford's fucking second team. Um, so yeah, I hate to sound like Mr Negative and I probably sound quite biased against Steve Bruce as if my argument is leaning against him no matter what I say but I do try and see from both sides but we have generally been very, very poor for the majority of the season and we were randomly put in a good performance. There was an upturn in fortune since, since Graham Jones came in and I would argue till I'm blue in the face with any Newcastle fan who disagrees with that. He came in just around the time we played Everton our system changed and we played very, very well away at Everton. Again, we probably caught them on an off day, but we were good. We pressed higher, which was nice to see. And I've gone back and watched my match review from that just to jog my memory again. We pressed a hell of a lot higher. We looked better going forward. We created chances and we always looked a threat on that counter-attack. And then suddenly that was a formation we slipped into. And Graham Jones, he's obviously been called up for England. Well done, Graham Jones. Not that you're watching this video, nor will you ever. But fantastic, and that speaks volumes of what he's like as a coach. And for him to be brought in mid-season, that tells me absolutely everything about Steve Bruce as a manager. He needs a new set of ideas, a new set of eyes to look over the squad. A bloke who's on, what, one, two million a year? It doesn't wash for me. You wouldn't you wouldn't get some of the... You wouldn't, it's just unheard of in the Premier League for a coach to come in midway through the season. And then the upturn in fortunes... And a lot of Newcastle fans say, yeah, but you're saying Graham Jones is responsible for the good. What about the bad? I'm not doubting that. I am not saying Graham Jones wasn't responsible for the Brighton away 3-0 defeat. I'm just looking at the season as a whole. And it has been a terrible season. And yes, we, we've stayed in the division. And that's what I'm trying to see as the main positive. But again, under Mike Ashley, what else can we expect? With this squad, I think we can expect a little bit more. A lot of people say in the Ashley regime, we cannot expect any more than survival. Bollocks. Absolute bollocks. Are you telling me that another manager with better credentials, better tactical awareness, new ideas in the game cannot get the likes better out of a squad that is Dubravka in goal, solid goalkeeper. Fernandez if centre-back, solid centre-back. Midfield, John Joe Shelby on his day can play. Isaac Hayden when he's fit, Almiron, Maximin, Wilson, <laughs> Fraser when he's obviously fit and available. I know he had a bit of a topsy year. You cannot sit there and tell me that we cannot expect a little bit better. I'm not saying European football. I'm not saying attack, 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 attack. I'm just saying better than what we've had to put up for that season. And that season was, to me, 60% bad. And then there'd be some right good performances. And we had that good end. And I've already said fair play to the lads because we survived. So, let's move on to a couple of highlights. Um, the questions are going to appear on the screen. And the most memorable match for me was has to be Leicester, doesn't it? We went away to Leicester City just very recently. It was always going to be this beautiful end of the season that we've had. Beautiful. It's a bit of an exaggeration, isn't it? But we went away to Leicester. They were chasing top four. We didn't expect too much. And we absolutely played them off the park. And that has to be my highlight, as I'm sure it will be for most Newcastle fans. It was a lovely Friday night. The beers went down super well that night. And we just always looked like scoring. And it was so nice to see. Wilson was at it. Maximum was at it. Almiron was even at it. And we just looked very, very good. Didn't really deserve to concede two goals in that game, I didn't think. And the, the scoreline flattered them. They even almost made it three with that Perez chance in injury time. But fantastic performance. And that's got to be my highlight in a season that's had very few. Worst game of the season, for me, it's a difficult one. They both came around the same sort of time. Obviously, Sheffield United in, in the league has to be the worst performance. I was literally punching walls and breaking sofa cushions that night. And that was when I lost, probably lost all faith in Steve Bruce that night. Playing against a team who hadn't won a game, didn't look like winning the game. And we made them look like Barca fucking loner. So... In the league, it has to be Sheffield United. But my number one disappointment of the season has got to be Brentford. 
How many times are we going to get a quarter-final tie against a championship second team? They didn't even care about that tie. And we just didn't show up. Whether that's the players bottling it, I, I don't know what that was. Obviously, something has to trans transcend down from the coach as well. But we put out a strong team and we barely even created a chance. We barely even had a sniff. And to go out that night was huge, huge disappointment because we were looking at a semi-final um, of the League Cup. Once you get to a semi-final, who knows what happens. And we were so close to, to we would have been one game away from Wembley. And I don't think we'll get a Brentford a championship second team in a quarter-final leg again. So it has to be Brentford, my biggest disappointment. Player of the season. Oh, um, a lot of Newcastle fans would probably say Maximin, but for me, he hasn't played enough. He's been injured too much to put him down as player of the season. Um, it's got to be for me, has to be Callum Wilson. He came in, and without his goals, where would we be? That's that, that's what I'm thinking with that. I've got a massive soft, soft spot for Isaac Hayden. I think he does so much graft for us, and he's a very talented footballer at the age of 25 in that defensive position. But it has to be Callum Wilson. One of the best signings strikers we've had since Shearer retired, probably since Denver Bar for me. I really, really rate him. I like Rondon, but I love how Wilson is always on the shoulder. He's exciting. He's got blister and pace. And he could be very, very good for us if he stays fit, if he decides to stay with us as a football club. But who would blame him for disappearing, let's face it. Worst signing, worst sort of signing of the summer. Again, it's difficult for me. Now, I would love to say Hendrick because he's looked an absolute shy, shower of shite. I'm not even sure what a Hendrick is, what the purpose of him is as a footballer since he's come in. But because of the excitement around the signing and the promise, it's got to be Jamal Lewis for me. And I've touched on Jamal Lewis a couple of times, mainly because when I watch him play as a defender, I don't see any attributes that can that can push on as he gets a little bit older. I know he's raw, and I'm not expecting amazing things at such a young age from a, a, a Premier League left back. But his positioning's poor from what I've watched him. Because I mean, he did play a bulk of the season. His positioning, his aggression in the tackle, his strength. I just even going forward, which is so important for fullbacks these days. I have not seen any quality. I think against who was it against in the cup when we when we won on penalties? Was it Morecambe we had in the cup when we ended up beating them? Just he had the opportunity that night. I think he must have put in about sixty crosses into the box, and every single one was piss poor. And the difference for me is when Paul Dummett's come into the team, he's looked so much more solid and we've been more solid defensively and that speaks volumes. Whether it's Steve Bruce's coach, and I mean, he's a, he was a defender by trade, so he, in theory he's got the right man managing him. But Jamal Lewis, after Liverpool interested in the summer, has got to be my biggest disappointment in terms of a signing. Best goal, just because it was like, wow, it had the wow factor. It's got to be Alan St. Maximin against Burnley when we won 2-1 away from home just recently. The start of this revival, if you like. A much needed three points when he came on in the second half. Carrying the ball the way he did. So exciting to watch. Dummy in the shot, cutting inside. And with his weaker foot, putting it in that bottom corner. Absolutely beautiful. And he even had the dance to suit. So that's got to be my goal of the season. If I was to sum up the season in three words, should do better. Simple as that for me. We've got a decent enough squad on paper. We've certainly got a better squad than some of the teams that we were constantly getting outplayed by for the majority of the season. We showed some of our promise in that final month. Steve Bruce is going to be sticking around, let's face it, unless his takeover goes through. I don't even like to say the T word anymore, the takeover word. But unless his takeover goes through, he will be sticking around. And, you know, on paper, the pundits will argue he deserves that because of the fact we finished 12th. That, for me, doesn't even begin to tell a quarter of the story of what the season has looked like as a whole. And it wasn't a successful season in that sense. But as the season went on, this is where the shift was. Looking at it from the last part, it was a success because we stayed up, because we were down and out at one point. But as a whole, Puet. Bruce had the investment. The squad, on even with the injuries we've had, was better than how we were playing and how we were performing in that league this year. And, yeah, should do better. Sums it up for me.
As always, Newcastle fans, what I want to know is what you think of the season, uh, who you think was the best player of the season, who you think was you know, your favourite goal, all of that sort of stuff. Let me know in the comments. I like to get your opinions just as much as I like to natter onto the camera like I am right now. And as always, like and subscribe. It really means a lot. My subscribers are slowly creeping up. We're about 122 now. 122, magic number. Um, as always as well, make sure you get us on Facebook and Instagram. And I'm going to be checking in a couple of times a week with videos on different bits and bobs. Um, obviously, the Euros is coming in. I'm not as passionate about England as, as I am my, my beloved Newcastle United, but we may do some stuff for England. And any content you'd like to see, let us know as well. And enjoy your bank holiday weekend. Thank you.